Shane, how would you describe your time in XPW? Shane, you want to answer that question? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I thought we had a, a, a real chance to do something there, it provided everything as was laid out to me as I laid it out as per, you know, requirements for me to come there. Uh, we, we were slowly doing what Paul had done early on, you know, whittling through the talent and elevating some and getting rid of some and bring, you remember Candido coming in and, uh, Sabu at one point. And, you know, we really were doing heading in the right direction until it, <laughs> until it stopped going in the right direction. And the excuse that I was given was our tape decks are down. <laughs> and I said, wait, you run a company that sells porno flicks that <laughs> quite a few get sold every week and you don't have a single backup you don't have a mechanic there you, a guy you call and say hey the decks are down and it was then that i had some friends sending me what they were putting on and uh, the one the, the, there were a lot of instances but the one that set me over the edge was we pj and i were working an angle and he had done this phenomenal promo in like a broom closet like real tight in Mine, my promo needed to come after because it was responding to what he said. And that particular show, mine, that made no sense at that point, opened up the show. And, <laughs> you know, and, and it was just that kind of stuff. Like, I, and I, like I tried to explain to, to Rob Black at the time, you know, nobody is saying right now Rob Bl Black fucked up or somebody that works for Rob Black. They're saying I fucked up because my name's on it as the booker. And, uh, and so I just sort of did like what I usually do. Just say, see ya. <laughs> Came on back to the Berg. Right. Right. But you, it's Berg the, living is the place for me. <laughs> that was one of the songs Franny was singing all weekend. I sang. <laughs> we couldn't figure out the words. So I, I brought up the lyrics and I sang Shane the whole Green Acres song. <laughs> now that, was that before or after? <laughs> He was sitting there like this, listening to me. And I was kind of like a sex to him. She had the foot stomps down and everything. The bump, bump. We were such morons. Very nice. Um, I like that. So your time that was there, though, was it enjoyable for you? I mean. Not really. I, okay. I mean, it was. I, you know, being back in the ring, it was great. And a lot of the guys, like Funk was in and uh, Candido was in. And, you know, Cody Michaels, of course, was there. So, yeah, I mean, I had some fun with it. But it's. uh you know the whole debacle that happened with Terry and his arm at the end there. Uh, you know it just it, it was just too much. It was just becoming a like a joke of itself. And then when I found out that he had started dabbling the porno into it, that was a break deal to me. Uh, I didn't no, know I, that. I, not that I, I'm not like everybody else likes to look at stuff now and then, but uh, now and then you know it, it, it had to be kept separate because that was the low hanging fruit of criticism that the ECW fans were leveling against it. And they were right. I mean, there's no reason for those two things to be connected until done woven into the storylines or whatever, uh, and not in a pornographic way. Oh, it, it was like how ECW used to go to the T-shirt commercials, you know, in between the breaks. They would go to like like a two-minute, you know, uh, slow jazz uh, music style, you know, topless girl everywhere yeah. montage. So it was kind of like what WEW did. See, I worked, I, I worked for a women's promotion when ECW folded. It was WEW Women's Extreme Wrestling, right? And the only way we can get on pay-per-view is if porn was involved. <laughs> so you had half the locker room who was legit workers, and then you had your porn girls. And guess who was the, the genius of this? It was Steve <laughs> Carroll. <laughs> Steve Carroll's the one that got us on pay-per-view. But if the porn wasn't in, intertwined then we wouldn't have had a show. So they used to call me to do voiceovers, right? So I'd be sitting there and it would be a match and I go, let's transition now to a uh, lovely Jade and Sarah. Uh, they, <laughs> want, they want to try out for uh, WEW. Do they have what it takes? Let's go to the footage. And it'd be the girls in bed. And I'd be sitting there like, this is so great. <laughs> uh, I had nothing to do with it, though. It was just a porn scene. But we, you know, that was the way we kind of we said everybody was trying out to be on the roster but it's so stupid <laughs> just your gratuitous cut the porno yeah exactly <laughs> and i hated it but if we didn't have it then we lost our pay-per-view spot yeah. so it was it was just ridiculous <laughs> uh somebody had said uh was i ever asked to go and i was uh rob black had called um and he had uh pitched 
because you were with Lizzie. So he had pitched that I go with him. Yes. Yeah. So um, I said, <laughs> I remember I said, well, I, I've never seen the product. And he goes, oh, I'll send you some DVDs. And I said, oh, I don't even have a DVD player. He sent me a DVD player. <laughs> he did. It was very nice of him. And I always put him over for that. It, it was. So I, I've got no problems with Rob. I mean, he's a good guy. But, you know, ultimately, when you're running any kind of company or business, uh, whoever the boss is, whoever's making the final decision, you got to follow that. Or you can fire that guy and do whatever you want. And, uh, you know, it just... It, and that, the whole thing with the tape decks went on for like a month, right? Like, oh, can't get them fixed. Don't have any tape decks. Can't do any, can't do any dubs. <laughs> it's like, okay, guys. Yeah. And that was that was the last of it right there. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Crazy. That is crazy. It had oh, such like, I mean, it had that, you know, they wanted you to think, okay, this is the second coming of ECW. Now that ECW is gone. Like this was, the players were there. The, the key people were in place but it just seemed like there was something that was missing. And then I think when you stepped away, it really lost its identity. And, you know, what's what's remembered about it now? They really remember. Everybody talks about New Jack throwing Vic Grimes, yeah. you know, off the scaffold more than any angle that, that ever took place. Right. You know, <clears throat> it's, you know, again, ultimately his company, right? He's the guy spending the money. <clears throat> right. So how the grownups do it is they say, Franny, I like your work, but we're going another direction. So we're going to go with Chad or whatever. <clears throat> um, it, it just belabored the point. And then like the whole thing of what they were saying to try to set up the excuse, uh, we don't have any tape decks that work. And this went on and on and on and on. Um, you know, I just, I, I, as I recall, when I left, it was, there was no like argument or heat or anything. I just said, uh, okay, you know, take me off guys. I'm done. You know, and, and that was it. You know, it was, uh, and the shame of it is, is, look, the reason, you know, for everybody out there listening and figuring, like, why couldn't we have done this or that, you know, and mixed them together, the whole fiasco between XPW and ECW after I'd left, yeah, that was weighing on a lot of ECW fans' minds. If we were as good or close to ECW, those fans would have still said, ah, eh, ain't ECW, right? So we really had to get into that ultra vein of being ECW consistently week after week after week in the houses on the TV show. And then at some point down the road, we might have been able to introduce something like that, that the fans then probably would have gravitated to. But because that was the big slam at the beginning, those two things had to be kept separate. Was the company done after you left or did it, like, did they do a couple more things and then no, they, they, they went on for a short while, I think, uh, with no tape back? What's that? <laughs> With no tape back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they went down to Kmart and bought one. <laughs> okay. I couldn't wait to do that earlier then. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, yeah, after I had left, and I forget how long it was, but that was when Rob and Lizzie had gotten in trouble with the government. But, and I'll put some two cents here on this. It was BS, right? Uh, the, the Supreme Court has steadfastly held that pornography, you know, done properly and everything. Is legal, it's First Amendment. And what happened there was his company had sent porno to some guy in California, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour from me, <clears throat> hour and a half. And who knew California PA has some of the most stringent anti pornography laws? In oh, the country. man. <laughs> so the, uh, her name was Mary Beth Buchanan, I think, who was the, uh, uh, not the Attorney General, the U.S. Attorney here in Pittsburgh, and she went after him. She went after Tommy Chong. Uh, oh, the Chicken Chong guy. Yeah, threatened to put his son in prison. And, of course, Tommy Chong said, no, take me. Um, and she went for these sort of high-profile cases like that. The best was when she tried to run for the Senate and got her ass handed to her. Uh, yeah, and I think what happened to Robin and, and Lizzie was was bullshit. Uh, you know, it's uh, it wasn't like they were sending it to a kid. It wasn't like they were ignoring, you know, checking to see how old the, per the buyer was or whatever. Uh, what happened was the girlfriend or wife received it and went to the police with it. So, uh, yeah. and, and they essentially, you know, this is how your federal government works, right? So they just basically bled him till he couldn't fight anymore. 
and finally accepted a plea bargain. I think they went to prison for like a year each or something. Did they? Wow. Yeah, yeah, pretty, you know, pretty crazy stuff. But uh, you know, it's and I've said from the time that, that happened that, that that he got railroaded. You know that it was it was crap. Uh, and you know, but uh, as long as the federal government's operating on the above board and you know following the rules like they do, it's <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> always as always.